Today we're going to take a look at the present perfect tense in German. Specifically, we're going to take a look at how to use strong verbs to form the present perfect tense. As usual, we'll begin our lecture with, a, with an example of how to form the present perfect tense in English before looking at that same sentence translated in German. After looking at examples of how to form the present perfect tense, we will look specifically at how to form past participles. Past, past participles are an essential part of forming the present perfect tense, and we'll see that German strong verbs follow roughly eight conjugation patterns. After looking at those patterns, uh, generally, we'll look at one uh, specifically, uh, what they call strong verb pattern 1b. Finally, we'll conclude our lecture with an example uh, with a discussion of when to use the auxili auxiliary verb sein or haben when forming the present perfect tense. So, the sentence you see on the screen uh, is a present is is in the present tense. It reports on an action that's happening right now. I help the man. We have the subject I first person singular, uh, and then we have subject verb agreement. I help help being first person singular present tense form of the verb. Now, I can take this same sentence and change it into the present perfect tense by doing two things. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the verb help and I'm going to change it into a past participle, helped. Now, once I've changed it into the past participle, I still need something that uh, agrees with the subject of the sentence, I. So, in this case, in English, I use the helping verb, the auxiliary verb, have. So, essentially, the present perfect tense in English is a two-verb construction. We have the present singular, the first person singular present tense auxiliary verb, have, and that agrees with the subject of the sentence, I have. And then we have the past participle, I have helped the man. Now, let's take a look at that same sentence in German. So here we have the sentence, Ich helfe dem Mann. And again, this is in the present tense. We have the subject of the sentence, Ich, first person singular. And we have the verb, first person singular, present tense form of helfen, Ich helfe. Now, I can take, as we saw in English, I can do the same thing in German. I'm going to do it slightly differently. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take, as we did in English, the verb helfe and remove it from the second position. This opens up a gap right after the subject of the sentence, ish. So, I'm going to take the auxiliary verb habe and drop that into the second position. So, again, I have subject verb agreement, ish habe. First person singular present tense auxiliary verb that agrees with the first person singular uh, personal pronoun. So the question is, what do I do with helfe? Well, I'm going to take that and put it at the very end of the sentence. But instead of leaving it in its present form, I'm going to change it to the past participle, geholfen. So again, what we have in German, as in English, is a two-verb uh, uh, construct here. We have the first person singular present tense auxiliary verb habe, which agrees with the subject of the sentence, ich habe. And then at the very end of the sentence or, or of the clause, we have the past participle, geholfen. Ich habe dem Mann geholfen. Now, if you'll recall from the lecture on how to form the present perfect tense using weak verbs. Weak verbs, it's very easy to form the past participle of weak verbs. Essentially, as you see on the screen, we take the stem of the verb, um, we add a GE prefix, and then depending on the, uh, the ending of the stem, we add either a T or an ET. Now you'll notice also that the verb diskutieren, any verb that has ihren in the root, diskutieren, fotografieren. Um, we don't add a GE prefix to those. So if you need a quick review of that, go ahead and take a look at the video on how to form the present perfect tense using weak verbs. Now, the 
like I said, so the past, uh, the present, the, the past participle with weak verbs is easy to form. Unfortunately, in, with German, uh, it's not so easy with strong verbs. However, what we do have going for us and to our advantage is that these strong verbs follow roughly eight conjugation patterns. Uh, and I had the patterns listed here on the screen. You could uh, pause the uh, pause the video lecture to take a look at those at your convenient uh, at your leisure. Um, so even though uh, now also the other thing is a lot of the uh, most grammar books have a list of these verbs in the back of the book. And if you don't have access to a grammar book, then a, a search on the internet. Uh, for German strong verbs, will pull up lists of, of these verbs and how to conjugate them. Um, what's nice is when you memorize these, and memorizing is basically the only way you can get a handle on these and, and remember them. But when you're going through and plowing through these lists of verbs, you'll notice that they start to follow or they start to fall into conjugation patterns. Like I said, there's roughly eight. So after a while, they become more predictable and more manageable. So, for instance, if we look at the first one, bison, bice, uh, now let's take a look at the second one, bleiben, bleib, blieb, geblieben. Well, we'll break, if we look closer at this pattern, what we call pattern 1b, we'll start to notice that other verbs also follow the same pattern. Treiben is to drive, and reiben is to rub, and schreiben is to write, and steigen is to climb, and schweigen is to be silent, and scheinen is to, to shine. Like, so eventually you could develop a feel for it. Bleiben, bleib, blieb, geblieben, treiben, treib, trieb, getrieben, reiben, reib, rieb, gerieben, schreiben, schreib, schrieb, geschrieben. So, uh, yeah, so don't give up. Keep memorizing the patterns. And eventually you'll develop a feel for these and will become second nature to you. Now, finally, before we conclude the lecture, when do I use the auxiliary verb haben and when do I use the auxiliary verb sein when forming the present perfect tense? Now, the rule of thumb is that if you have a, a verb, a past participle, past participle that shows motion, for instance, the uh, sentence on the screen, ich bin im Auto gefahren, I, I have driven, I drove in the car. Uh, the car is moving from point A to point B. There's motion involved. So I will use some form of the verb sein in, as the auxiliary verb. So ich bin. Likewise, if the past participle or the verb shows a change of condition. Ich bin Polizist geworden. I became a police officer. One moment I was a college professor minding my own business, and the next one I became a, a police officer. Uh, it's a dramatic change of condition, right? So uh, if I show change of condition, I too will also use a form of the verb sein. Now, Everything else, roughly, it's safe to use some form of the verb haben. So, ich habe sie gesehen. I have seen her or I've seen them. The gesehen, past participle of uh, sehen to see, uh, reports on an action completed. There's no motion involved. I'm not moving from point A to point B. There's no uh, change in condition. I'm simply reporting the fact that I saw her or, or these people. And in instances like this, it's safe to use the auxiliary verb haben. Uh, finally, there are a few sort of instances where maybe it's less clear that you have to use sein. And some verbs, for instance, uh, like sein itself, uh, bleiben, to remain, or passieren, it happens or occurs to, automatically take sein as an auxiliary. For instance, the sentence you see on the screen, Ich bin in Berlin gewesen. I have been in Berlin. Now, there's no motion involved. There's no change of condition. Gewesen is the past participle of sein. And since it is the past participle of sein, I have to use some form of sein eh, as the auxiliary verb. So, yeah, most instances, it's a safe, uh, sort of a safe uh, uh, rule of thumb. Motion, change of condition, use sign. Uh, these are the ones that you would have to use sign anyway. It's maybe not as evident. Everything else, use haben. Anyway, that's the uh, lecture on present perfect tense in German using strong verbs.